Welcome, travelers, to my realm of nightmares. Allow me to be your personal assistant. Come in, take a seat, get comfortable. For when you step into my realm, there's no stepping out. Hello, travelers. PA Nightmares here. I've noticed that over 30% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So, if you're a new or returning viewer and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you like what I do, liking the video and commenting as well, as it really helps push this video onto the algorithm and it really does help the channel grow. Well, I've taken enough of your time. On to the main event. I've never met a Chihuahua that I liked, aside from the one that used to be the mascot for Taco Bell. Other than that one though, all the ones I've ever seen, or have come in contact with, have been little over hyper fur balls of barking annoyance. Whenever someone with one happened into our town, they'd always want to start shit with me. Keep in mind, I'm like 6'4", and I do absolutely nothing to appear as a threat to them. Why they think picking on people much larger than them is a good idea, I'll probably never know. Maybe it's a territory thing. I don't know. What I do know is that the trail park incident has only solidified my hatred for that breed. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Carl hissed at Zippy. She wouldn't stop. Her shrill barks echoed throughout the park. Carl tried to calm her down by offering her a squeaky toy. Instead of biting it, she bit him. Bitch! He cried out through gritted teeth while clutching his bloody hand. She kept on barking, drawing the attention of the beast as indicated by the fact its depths were now far more audible to us. Carl finally managed to shut Zippy up by snagging her, then stuffing a squeaky pretzel in her mouth. The monster drew closer until its two legs became visible to us. Not only were they incredibly thick, its arms were unnaturally long, and in its claws, similar to one sloths have, coarse dark fur covered it, and it gave off a foul, ashy stench. Please go away, I thought. I glanced over at Carl and Nick. The former seemed to be attempting to get something out of his backpack. Guys, he whispered, holding something up. What he held up made my eyes go wide. Is that a flashbang? Nick asked in a low, yet bewildered tone. Carl nodded. I've been saving it for emergencies, and I think right now might be the time to use it. Maybe not. Look, it's going, I said, pointing. In retrospect, that and the dead silence afterwards should have been a dead giveaway to us for what happened next. Oh, shit! I yelled, getting dragged across the ground. The creature yanked me from underneath the trailer, holding me upside down. Its smell was now practically suffocating me. The best way I can describe how it looked is somehow being bipedal, crossed between a boar and a wolf. It had the eyes and teeth of a wolf, but also the snout and tusks that a boar possess. Hang on, Pete. Carl called out as it raised one of its claws. I braced myself for the strike when I heard several gunshots, followed by a roaring in pain, causing it to drop me. It was only after landing on my back with a hard thud did I notice how tall it really was. It had to be 10 feet at least. With the wind knocked out of me, there wasn't much I could do other than listen to it go after Carl. Thankfully, it didn't take me long to recover and pull myself up. The creature was still chasing Carl, and I, I didn't see Nick anywhere. Carl and it made their way around the park, back towards my direction. I didn't know how I could help until my eye fell on my crutches that I had left by the trailer. Using one, I kicked it in front of them. Seeing this, Carl jumped over it. The beast wasn't so fortunate. It let out a surprised roar, tripping over the crutch and landing on the ground with a hard thud. Carl seized this opportunity. 
Hide, Pete, he shouted, pulling the pin on his flashbang and then tossed it under the monster. We dove back under the trailer as the flashbang went off, filling the area with blinding light. Carl's theory about it being weak to light turned out to be true. It gave off a much louder, pained roar this time, blindly stumbling around. Once again, Carl seized this opportunity. Crawling out from underneath the trailer, he fired some shots at its legs. With it weakened, the bullets pierced through the target, making it collapse to the ground. Carl then finished the beast off, putting one between its eyes. As it let out its last dying gasp, Nick, holding Zippy's carrying cage, came running with her in front of him. She leaped onto the now dead beast, barking furiously at him. Did you actually manage to kill it? Nick asked, noticing the now dead monster. Yeah, Carl replied, breathing heavily. At that point, Zippy had become silent, and she became that way the instant she leapt onto the creature. Once again, we should have recognized that as an omen. At that moment, however, we were just glad that it wouldn't be bothering anyone anymore. We weren't the only ones either. The residents came out of the trailers. I, I can't believe it, the man said. You really, you really killed it. Everyone stared in silence for a moment. What, what happens now, I asked. Almost as though in response to my question, a light appeared at the entrance to the trailer park. We're, we're finally going home, a man smiled. The light swept over everything in a brilliant flash. When it cleared, we found ourselves still in the trailer park. Only now it was day instead of night. Everyone cried and laughed. Nick grabbed Zippy, putting her in the cage. The creature's body, under the light of the sun, started dissolving. We can finally get on with our lives. We can. Suddenly, a man doubled over, clutching his stomach in pain, and so did the other tenants. What's wrong? Carl asked him, growing concerned. They were in so much pain, none of them could reply. All they could do was stare at us with pleading eyes. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything we could have done for them. Right in front of us, each and every resident started rapidly losing weight. Within seconds, they became emasculated before breaking down, turning into dust. Escaping from an over two decade long hell, just to suffer that fate. I already knew that fairness and life weren't exactly the best of friends. However, that was a truly fucked up sight to behold. Well, why? I asked in shock. Why did that happen? I don't know, Carl replied. It was like they just starved to death. The police kept them alive no matter what. That means they probably never felt hungry. But clearly, that changed when they got back here. Well, there's nothing that we can do for them now. Let's just get our money and try to forget about this. As we began walking towards the park's exit, a deep growling noise grew noticeable to us that was coming from the cage. Guys! Nick yelled, staring into it. Knowing the same thing showed us Zippy, whose eyes were now a sickly yellow. Her teeth were considerably larger, seeming almost too big for her mouth. Her limbs were now much longer, almost noodle-like, yet somehow able to support her. She grinned at us. As if Chihuahuas couldn't become any more annoying to deal with, Zippy somehow became possessed. Her cage stood on the ground with a circle of salt surrounding it. For the past two or so minutes, she's been barking, which sounds akin to maniacal laughter. How the fuck are we going to explain this? I asked. I'm working on that, Carl replied. At least the salt's worked. I guess whatever's possessing her is weakened here. Yeah, well, regardless, if Mendy sees her like this, she'll probably have a heart attack. So, does anyone have any solutions? I'm going to check if she's still here. In the meantime, you and Nick see if you can come up with anything. Carl jogged off, leaving us alone with Zippy. Thankfully, she had mostly quieted down at that point. Aside from letting out some growling, gargling noises. Do you think we'd get anybody out here to exercise her? Nick asked. Huh, maybe. But that'd mean convincing someone to come out here. You heard, Mindy. Everyone in town is afraid of this place. So what? We fixed that. Yeah, but would they believe we did? I think it's worth a shot. I've never heard of a pet exorcism before, 
though I have you. It's the first time for me. How do you think this is going to work then? Beats me. Carl returned shortly later, informing us that Mindy had left. We relayed to him the idea that we came up with. That means one of us would have to stay here while the others go get someone. He said, Can I trust you two to do that while I stay here? Are you sure you're going to be fine alone with her? I asked, pointing to Zippy's cage. Yeah, I'll be fine. Just hurry back. After leaving the park, we headed to the nearest church, hoping somebody would be able to help us. Can I help you two? The priest asked, glancing up from some paperwork he was shifting through. He was the only one there at the time. This'll sound weird, Nick responded, but do you know how to perform an exorcism? The priest stopped what he was doing, looking back up at us. Is this some kind of joke? He asked, visibly annoyed. No, Nick continued. It has to do with the trailer park. Out. The priest pointed to the double doors. Wait, at least hear us out, Nick told him. No, whatever you two are planning, I don't want anything to do with it. Now leave. But, I put a hand on Nick's shoulder. What? Just follow my lead. We turned to leave, heading for the exit. <sighs> oh well, I said. I guess we'll have to see if we can get help at another church. I bet if a priest is able to survive going to the park, he'd get a lot of new followers. Wait, the priest called out, causing us to stop. What exactly are you two trying to do? We explained what we were doing at the park. You spoke with Mindy? We did, I answered. We heard her talking on the phone yesterday. Was it with you? Yes, he nodded. Were you three able to get Zippy back from the park? Sort of. So, do you know how to perform an exorcism? Why are you asking? Her dog got possessed. It's a long story. Anyway, can you help? Well, if the park is safe to go to now, I suppose I can try to. Meet me outside in ten minutes. I need to gather some things. Do you think this guy can do it? Nick asked as we were going down the steps of the church. We'll just have to wait and see. That's the first time I've been in a church in years. Same for me. The priest came outside, carrying a large number of things in his arms. This included a Bible, a cross, a bottle of holy water, and a bag of crystal salt. We followed him back to the trailer park, then introduced him to Carl. This is the dog? He asked, peering into the cage. His face had gone noticeably pale. This may frighten me, he continued speaking in a shaky voice. However, with God on my side, I shall vanquish this evil. He then began making a much larger circle around the one Carl had already made. Once done, he proceeded to open his Bible and holy water bottle. In the name of Jesus Christ and his Father, God the Creator, I command you to be gone from this innocent animal, he declared, flinging holy water into the cage. Zippy hissed in response, making us think that the priest's actions were working to exercise her. Upon seeing this, he grew more confident. That's right, you are no match for the power of my faith. Zippy whimpered, and he walked close to the cage, breaking the salt circle around it. What the hell are you doing? Carl asked him. Don't worry, it's weakened. I admit I was worried, but since there's enough faith here among us, this won't be a problem. What does he mean by that? I wondered as he knelt down to open the cage. When I realized the answer to that, I felt my blood run cold. Wait, don't open the cage, I yelled, turning to warn him. We, we aren't religious. Wait, what? It was too late. Sibby attacked the priest, using her paws to pin him to the ground, then proceeded to begin snapping at him. Why didn't you tell me? He screamed. We didn't think it was important, I replied. Get out of there. He attempted crawling away only to be dragged back by his legs. Help me, he wailed, getting his back chomped into. Is there anything we can do for him? I asked. Seeing Zippy bite into his neck answered my question. We thought that killed him for sure. Instead, she released her grip on him, and he sat up with his back to us. Hey, are you all right? Carl said to him. He twisted his neck around, cracking as it did, until his head was facing backwards. We could see that his eyes were now entirely white, 
and were slightly glowing. Sibby's teeth marks were visible on his neck. He answered Carl's question by letting out a gargling moan, as what I could only describe as pink bile came out of his mouth. I don't think he is, Nick said, his face wrinkling in disgust. What do we do now? The salt circle seemed to be holding them back. Unfortunately, it didn't last very long due to a gust of wind that blew part of it away. Zippy and the priest looked from the opening and then to us. Wide smiles stretched across their faces, making my stomach drop. Well, shit, I said. I would like to thank tonight's author or authors for allowing me to use their works. If you enjoyed this, the author's links will be in the description below. Please check them out and let them know PA sent you. Also, if you'd like to walk around representing my realm and gaining new travelers, the links to my merch store, my website, and all my other social medias will be in the description below. As always, I'd like to say a special thank you to all my lovely Patreons. All of their names will appear on screen. I'll make sure to put all their links into the description below so you guys can check them out as well if you'd like. But as always, travelers, once you step into my realm, there's no stepping out.